This is Twit. Russ Pitts is on the horn. Hello, Russ. Hello, oh. Leo. Hello, Hello. Russ. Megan. <laughs> Hi. Oh, it's great to see you. It's good to see you. Russ, uh, you, you wrote a book which is available. I can't even say the name on TV, but it's, <laughs> a, it's available on Amazon. Eagle Spit, we'll say. The, sure. Yeah, it's your story. The story of Russ working at the early, early days of Tech TV, mm -hmm. and that's available on Amazon. Uh, and it's based on a memo that you wrote, uh, <laughs> which became infamous, infamous at Tech TV, and we all loved. It was yeah, it was on another uh, a website we can't say the name of fcompany.com. Oh, yeah. oh did, did, did it make it to big, Pud's F Company? Was, oh, nice. That was the Buzzfeed of the original dot com. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Pud once told yeah. me. His whole goal in life was to write sites that he didn't have to do any work for. Mm -hmm. So he'd always create sites that just generated content all by themselves. Smart <laughs> man, smart cookie. You have a site now called TakeThis.org. Tell us what Take This does. Take This is a, a, a nonprofit in the video game space uh, primarily. It's a mental health advocacy and awareness nonprofit. Uh, my co-founders and I, we, we lost some friends uh, several years back to depression. We realized there was, there was not a, a big push to get people talking about mental health issues. Uh, people in video game studios as well, they crunch, uh, they, they work really hard, they uh, don't feel comfortable talking about their, their issues, don't feel comfortable getting help. And then, you know, our, our, our good friend, Dr. Mark Klein, was a mental health clinician, and he'd tell us that the number one way to get people to help is to, is to let them feel comfortable talking about what they're experiencing. And so we found that people would not talk about what they're going through. They wouldn't get help. Yeah. And then sometimes, you know, they uh, tragic outcomes. So we started to take this to, to get people to uh, talk about uh, you know, we talk about what we go through. We go to, we do panels. We we publish stories at TakeThis.org of what people experience when they deal with mental health issues. We actually work with video game studios to help make their workplaces uh, more mentally healthy. We're at a lot of the major uh, conventions in the geek and game space, uh, providing a, uh, spaces where people can come if they're experiencing, uh, you know, anxiety attacks or panic attacks. They can come, they can talk to somebody. You call uh, those AFK out. rooms, away from keyboard rooms. I think that's yeah, we such call a those the idea. AFK rooms. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's the most boring room at any convention. <laughs> Intentionally, uh, on, per on purpose. Yeah, exactly. We have we have coloring books, but mostly Aww. you know it's just chairs and tables. People come, some people charge their phones. Uh, and then we have our trained volunteers. We call them psychomancers, uh, who are there, who know how to work, you know, talk someone through uh, a panic attack, uh, and know when to uh, call for help if, uh, you know, if someone needs a little bit more help than that. And so you've been doing this for a few years. It's not new. Are you noticing a change? Are you noticing more people in the AFK rooms, more people talking about their mental health? Absolutely, yeah. The the AFK rooms. Every show that we return to, we see an increase in the number of people uh, using the rooms. We see an increase in the number of people who are aware of the space. Uh, the first few times we'll do a, a an AFK room at a new convention, we have to educate that that community that the resource is there. Uh, some communities, uh, you know, we also find that depending on where we're at in the country and in the world, there's more or less awareness of of mental health issues and mental health sort of maintenance. Uh, but we are finding over the years, we, we founded the organization in 2012, so now we're in our sixth year, uh, and we are. We're finding a lot more people who are comfortable talking about their issues. People are actually coming to us asking for, you know, if they can help us do one thing, help us develop programs. That's actually led to our newest program. It's called the Ambassador Program. We just rolled it out uh, this week. It's, we're working with streamers, uh, uh, Twitch partners, people who... Uh, have communities and are building communities and a lot of times these people in their communities come to them and say hey I really like watching your stream uh, but I don't you know but I'm experiencing these mental health issues and I don't have anyone to talk to so what we do is we, we bring the, the the community the community leaders and the streamers in uh, we give them sort of a crash course on how they can actually talk to people about mental health issues in a constructive way and so you have uh, worked with the gaming community, which is a tight community, and now working on having them speak more, people that game speak more to each other about their feelings. What about game developers? Are there specific problems that game developers... Yeah, are they worse like? than normals? You know, we found that when we started putting together research to do uh, lectures and talks, we found that the, the common statistic about mental health issues is roughly one in four people in America deal with mental wow. health issues. Wow. Uh, yeah, right? That's 25%. That's a, that's a lot, right? And it's so uh, stigmatized, though, you wouldn't know that, right? Because everybody hides it. Everybody that's the hides problem. It. we got to talk about it. 
Yeah. We found that game development in the game development community, anecdotally, we don't have a lot of evidence on this because people don't talk about it, people don't report it, but anecdotally, we, we think that the number is closer to one and two wow. uh, for people in the video game development. Is company. that because the job's so stressful? Partly, uh, they, you know, they tend to work long hours. They tend to uh, work at a computer, uh, not get up. A lot of folks will work straight through lunch, and they think they're, you know, doing a better job by uh, sort of running themselves into the ground. And you're expected to, too. I mean, that's the culture, right? Yeah, there's a lot of sort of machismo around that. You know, if I can work longer than the guy next to me, right, then I'm a better coder or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, they change jobs a lot. There's a lot of layoffs. People move across the country. There's a lot of stressors, timelines. There's deadlines. Uh, a lot of times milestones change depending on what's going on in the industry elsewhere or with the publisher. Uh, so it can be a really stressful job. And we found that people don't, you know, they work in these environments where they don't feel comfortable taking a day off even uh, because they feel stressed or they might not even know what they're going through. So that's what we do. We'll come in and we'll uh, give lectures and seminars at, at these studios just to give people an overview of mental health wellness and then if we need to drill down uh, more specifically with specific teams we can do that too so tell us about the game because that's i'm excited about that we brought it gave us an excuse to break out the super nintendo <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this game i guess it was just delayed for 20 years uh, <laughs> well there was a lot of stress in its making let's put it that way right this yeah, is no, what happens no. when developers take time off kids <laughs> Get back to work. That's right. It took a lot of time off. <laughs> now, our good friends at Mega Cat and uh, Devolver Digital uh, put together this game, Fort Parker's Crunch Out, uh, and you get to play uh, Devolver Digital's uh, CFO, Fort Parker, and you get to crunch the that's the guy the with, a, out of it. with a yeah, mustache. With the so mustache. he's the he's the boss. So you get to be that's a bad right. guy. So this person is sleeping. I can go get uh, coffee for them, maybe. Um, let's hope they're sleeping. Their eyes are crossed out. I don't know if that uh -oh, they're Oh, maybe they're dead. dead. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> Do you have any deaths in this? I hope not. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Trigger warning. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to electric shock. I'm going to go for the big what? guns. Here's the battery okay. I can yeah. choose. There's an electric shock? Yeah. Will that wake them up? Uh, I hope so. Okay, I've got a battery. Oh, my God. Look at this. This I've is a... cruel. Oh, it didn't wake her up. Maybe the other side? Oh, maybe. Or let's try this guy. Oh, they're oh, they're all work. falling asleep. Yeah. Look, you've got other ones. Oh, Back ah, the pig oh, hit me. Oh no, you're never gonna make this game. <laughs> so I got. Wait, the, what is? Why did the pig just kill me? Oh, oh yeah. there you go. Oh, there I go. oh he's back there to work. You, you need I've more battery juice happen. for her, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I probably do. Or I can get it. There, there's a stick available, too. You can I beat can them? Get. Yeah. Man, I like this game. Um, See, I'm Fork Parker. You are. Do you want to play? <laughs> really? Okay, I got the stick. I'm going to hit this lady yeah. with a stick. Have you ever asked me for a day off, Megan? What did I do? <laughs> no. I hit you with a stick. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that so, remind, when I first when I first played this game, it did remind me of working with Leo. <laughs> yes, exactly. Leo does resemble Fort Parker. So every tool doesn't work on people. I mean, this is a good this is good management skills here. Sometimes they like coffee. Sometimes they like a stick in the head. Oh, oh. Well, you've got all but two programmers working now. And I can pick up all this money too that's it, laying all over the floor. It's slipping. Your your ship date is slipping. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, I got the coffee. So what do we day. what what is the point of this? Do we learn how not to be? We, <laughs> I think I think the goal is to to poke some fun at a serious oh. issue in the game space. Crunch is a big deal, and it runs people into the ground. You know, I uh, several years this this information is several years out of date. But last time I wrote an article about uh, employment in the video game space, the average time in the industry was five years. Really? Wow. Yeah. So that uh, the average video game employer would spend wow. five years in the industry before bouncing out. Uh, due to stress or layoffs or whatever. It's and I don't work. think that's changed significantly since no. then. Think about so that hope, next you know, time you play No Man's Sky, you know? You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's that's... Uh, that's you're, you're working... Uh, you're paid in blood, sweat, and tears here. This is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every time something horrible happens in the news where someone takes their own life, we always hear people saying, like, reach out. You know, people love you. We love you. But then other people say, like, it's really hard when you're depressed yeah. to reach out. So yeah. um, just saying reach out, just do it is hard. So what, what do you suggest that people, if you're, uh, if you ha like, if you, you want to reach out to someone, what are some ways, you know, besides just saying, like, hey, you know, are you depressed? Like, what, what are some ways to reach out to people? Is that what you do? Say, are you depressed? 
Yeah, uh, you know, keep track of your friends. Uh, I, I think you, you tend to know who in your friends group struggles with uh, with feeling good, or, or maybe you know, maybe they've been open about their mental health issues in the past. People tend to get down uh, when things happen, right? So if there's something in the news that's a, a big story, like when isn't there now? Yeah, good uh, luck. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, keep keep tabs on your friends and check out if you haven't heard from somebody in a few days. Uh, feel free, you know, reach out, ding them on Twitter or whatever, you know, however you keep in touch with people. Uh, send them some, you know, send them a copy of uh, Fork Parker's Crunch Out if you want. Uh, we actually have things at, at Take This that we sell through our, our, our partners, uh, Wormwood Gaming. I call them uh, little hope shields, and I don't actually have one on me. But it, it, we basically sell those at conventions where we're at, and something you can buy, and it's, and it's pocket sized. You can hand it to somebody as a reminder that you care about them. And a lot of people, and that can be anything. It could be a, a coin. It could be like a rock you found on the beach. If there's somebody you know who struggles, they're oh, there, right there. Um, and they make, you know, they make different types of uh, wood. Those are collectible, and they're a lot of fun. They're like little worry stones. Oh, I want so, one of those. That's and cool. And it's something you can yeah. hand to someone and say, "Hey, I, uh, I love I you. I know you it's sometimes gonna, struggle. Yeah, yeah, I love you. Hold we care this when yeah. you're feeling down, and, and re remember how much we want you uh, with I, us." I, right? I do also want to say though. Uh, when somebody does commit suicide, everybody around them feels like they failed. And uh, so I don't want to put pressure, I don't want it to be the impression that it's your job. You know, you should reach out, obviously, but it, but if you lose somebody, it doesn't mean you failed, does it? No, no, absolutely. You know, you can't control what other people do and you can't take right. responsibility for right. what someone else chooses to do. Um, it's good to reach out to people. It's good to let them know that you're there. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you can't feel responsibility for what someone chooses to do right. uh, because, the, you know, the, there's more more than whether or not they heard from you going on there, right? Uh, these issues are so complicated. And I think a lot of the reason people don't feel comfortable talking about them is there, there is that sort of sense of guilt and that sense That's of right. ick ickiness. That it's really hard to, to connect with somebody because you're afraid you don't know what to do. And you know, we tell people the number one thing you can do to someone is, just, is simply listen. Uh, yeah. Tell them you're there. Tell them you care about them and listen to what they have to say. And that is such a powerful act. It's so often that when people uh, you know, say they're listening to you, but they're just simply waiting for their turn to talk, right? Uh, if you, you, reach you know out to me someone, so well, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, know, I, think so, I think that's important to say <laughs> that it isn't your responsibility to keep your friend uh, safe and alive. But it's all of our responsibility to create environments where it's safe to say, I'm not feeling good, where we express at all times to everybody our support and love. Those environments will help more than anything else. That let's, let's change how we think about things. Uh, and I think you're doing, Take This is doing a great job. And that's really why you have rooms like that and the badges. No one person is responsible for their other people in their lives, but we all are responsible for making it a safer space and a healthier space for everybody, no matter what That's industry. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. did we mention that all the proceeds go to take this for this game? Nice. We're not trying to make... Um, now, do you sell million. Nintendos? Because I don't think I have one lying around anymore. <laughs> we'll have to work on that. Yeah. Maybe we can also partner with Nintendo. To what, is this, do, what is this, Duvicky? What is this you're using? Is this a new... This is the an analog sent us this. It is uh, so. There's some. Are, can you buy this now? This so. This is you can buy if you're nostalgic. Uh, basically, everything in SNES did in a much smaller, more modern package, and it will run the Fork Parker cartridge, which yeah, is pretty cool. It's the Super NT. Like it. That's neat. So th there is a. I mean, there is a market for this kind of nostalgic mm -hmm. stuff. I see our 15 year old play these games all the time. They're fun. He loves the old 8-bit stuff. They are fun. There's, There's something about them. Yeah, no Uncanny Valley there. Yeah. I mean, except between you and Fork Parker, but other than yeah, that. Yeah, that is a little uncanny. <laughs> Honest, I Russ. I the tapes are coming back, too. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> Russ, it's great. So uh, I want it, everybody, I can't say the name of the book, but I can show it on the screen. Everybody should run to Amazon. Two ninety nine for the Kindle edition. It's, it is the inside story of what happened at Tech TV. And incidentally, the only, I like it because you say nice things about me. Mm -hmm. in the, uh, well, yeah. so well I, deserved. I, I appreciate it, even though I never read any of the jokes you wrote for me, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> even though I was Tech TV employee number one. Yeah. Te technically. Technically. Uh, because, right, because I was, uh, when I was hired for the web team on screensavers, 
the transition from CDTV to tech TV was in place. So they, they put me in a holding pattern until they finished the right. paperwork, officially right. changed the name to tech TV. And I was there for tech TV employee number one. You can't, I can't tell you tech how TV. angry that made me, but that's okay. <laughs> we, I got over it. No, just kidding. No, I, I felt it every time yeah, we shared uh, that You, connection. you again, employee zero. <laughs> Wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it, wrap it up. <laughs> that's that's the other thing I always I hear from we, Russ. We don't have that anymore in the years. We wrap as long as we want. Hard wrap. <laughs> Leo, you're killing me. That's the, my favorite one. I wait till I hear that, and I'm hearing it right now. It's odd. <laughs> Russ Pitts, you're the greatest. Take this dot org. Everybody should support this if you want to get a copy of Fork Fork Parker's Crunch Out. You could get it there. Russ, you're doing God's work. I really. Really am grateful uh, for what you're doing. Megacatstudios.com, $49. Even if you don't want the game or you don't have anything to play the game, think of it as just a donation. Well, you, you could, could just donate. On, you could go to the you could, site. Yeah, you could just donate. Or if you could just put it on your um, you know, your credenza or something. I, I donated mm -hmm. last time we talked to you so that you could do those uh, AF key rooms. I thought that was such a great idea. It is. And it was much appreciated. And I appreciate you you know, letting us come on the show and talk about what we're doing. Uh, by... By talking about it and, and being open about what we're doing is the only way I we agree. can make a difference. Yeah. yeah, Tom Merritt wrote the foreword on that, by the way, so I mean, point it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's really the key. There's such a stigma. You know, I have I have mental illness in my uh, life, and there's such a stigma against it. It's so scary to people. Everybody covers it up. But once you start talking about it, you realize it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody, if it's not happening to them, has a family member it's happening to, a close friend it's happening to. We've got to end the stigma. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were doing uh, This Week in Google uh, a little while ago with Aunt Pruitt and uh, Kevin Tofel and had a marvelous conversation about that. Both of them said, yeah, I have experience with my life, with, my, mm -hmm. with close friends, and it's really an issue that we can't continue to cover up. We've got to be honest about it. And then we can all support each other because really we're all in this together. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Great to see you. The Bye. great Russ Pitts. Eagle spit. <laughs> Just if you search for Russ Pitts on Amazon and the story of tech TV employee number one, you'll find it. Adult consideration mm -hmm. approved or something.